So in our 1997 study, we had 17 different ecosystem services, and we uh, did a meta-analysis. We surveyed the literature and, uh, and got estimates of the contribution to well-being of each of those in, in dollar terms, added them all up. Um, <clears throat> we recognized that there were you know, um, limited studies, of, particularly of some, some biomes. And so uh, since then, there been a lot more, there's been a lot more research done, so we've updated the, the unit values, the per hectare uh, per year uh, values. Uh, almost all of those have increased because there have been uh, substantial new, new studies. Uh, but we also then looked at the change in land, air, land use uh, over, over that time period, and there have been substantial losses of very high-value ecosystems like coral reefs and, and uh, coastal wetlands and, and uh, tropical forests. And those, uh, so the, the, um, uh, the, the, the value uh, estimates have gone up, but the land areas uh, of the high value ones have gone down, and the net effect has been uh, a total, a loss of, of uh, aggregate value in the order of $20 trillion per year. Mm -hmm. So it's a substantial loss of, you know, of uh, a value contribution uh, compared to, you know, which, which has to be balanced against the, the gains in, in, uh, in GDP. And I think those two things are, are uh, canceling each other out. We could do much better, you know, if we take these into into account. We could create, you know, forms of agriculture that don't don't destroy the ecosystem services and at the same time produce the the uh, agricultural products that that we need. Uh, likewise, for other other sectors of the economy, we could, you know, once once you're aware of these trade-offs, I think we can do a much better job of of creating, you know, win-win situations. First, we have to recognize that um, human well-being and the sustainability of that well-being depends on a lot more than simply how much we produce and consume, the things that are measured in, in, in things like GDP. So, so I, I think once you've realized that and begin to try to measure uh, how much uh, these other assets, uh, in addition to our, our built capital, our economy, how much do these other assets actually contribute to human well-being? So, uh, we're trying to estimate the, uh, the value, the, the contribution to well-being of uh, our, our natural capital um, and uh, the ecosystem services that it, it provides. Um, so we did a study back in 1997 that estimated that value at being su substantially larger than GDP. And we're recently, now we're working on an update uh, to that study based on, on new da data uh, that shows that, that in fact it's substantially larger. but but there have been losses since 1997 of our, of our natural capital assets, the change in land, uh, land use, we've lost wetlands, we've lost tropical forests, we've lost coral reefs, and so there's been a substantial decline in the, in the total contribution to human well-being from that natural capital. And we have to start bringing these ideas on board uh, and build them into our, our accounting and our policy frameworks if we really want to build a sustainable future that maintains human quality of life uh, going forward, and that's really what what this the, the primary goal should be. Uh, so, for another example, is uh, we've been working with a uh, an alternative measure to GDP. GDP does not measure human well-being; it measures production and consumption of of marketed uh, goods and services, things we pay for. It's one contribution to human well-being, but it's certainly not not the only one. Uh, so, if you start uh, estimating some of the negative effects, uh, the loss. Of air and uh, you know air and water pollution, the costs of those things, uh, the, the loss of social capital in various ways, um, the uh, uh, maldistribution of income. So worsening income distribution has an impact on welfare versus income. If you take all those things into account, there's a measure called the Genuine Progress Indicator uh, that does that. And we recently synthesized all of the studies at, in uh, various countries, 17 different countries that have done that. And uh, it showed that at the global level, even though GDP continues to increase, GPI uh, leveled off in about 1978 or so, and it's been fairly flat since then. So continuing to emphasize growth in GDP as a solution to all of our problems is really a, a misplaced uh, policy because it ignores uh, these substantial now uh, external costs, things that are outside the market, that really do affect uh, human well-being. Uh, there was a recent study by true cost for the for TEB, the economics of ecosystems and biodiversity, that estimated the uh, the costs, the external costs associated with uh, business activities, uh, and uh, their estimate was around uh, seven uh, trillion dollars per year of external costs that are not incorporated in in business accounting books or in or in GDP. 
And uh, so it, it, it uh, recognized that many companies are, are really not making a, a social profit, they're, they're, uh, they're making a private profit, but they're doing that by mislabeling some of these external costs as profit rather than, than as, uh, as real costs. So I think we really need to change our whole accounting framework uh, to be much broader, much more comprehensive, uh, something that picks up you know, uh, many of these other external costs and, and benefits of, of things outside the market. And I think once we do that, we can plot a much, more, uh, a much better course toward a sustainable and desirable future.